Hello everybody, welcome to OTC Fish Keeper. And uh, this week I'm going to, uh, to give you a brief update on everything I'm working on in the fish room. It's, uh, it's been quite a while since I've done something like this and got a lot of activities going on, got a lot of plans and thought I'd share them with you guys. Thought I'd start right here with my 125 gallon uh, African cichlid tank. Uh, original plan was to fill this up with African cichlids, you know, and then just make a really cool looking tank. Maybe get a baby here or there. But uh, I went and put the new Africans in here, the little ones, to grow out, not realizing that I already had some growing out. I should have put them in the opposite tanks. And uh, But because of that, the, uh, the ones in the 40 gallon breeder tank, the grow out tank, those had actually started reproducing and these are thinking about it, so I'm kind of like wanting to get a few babies out of it first and then I'll put them all together. But for now, things are working out really well, so I'm like, yeah, kind of wait and see. So let me show you close up here this tank. Right now I've got some uh, African strawberry peacock cichlids in here. Just two now, I guess the others have died off. And then I've also got some uh, some uh, uh, some yellow labs in here. Now oh, there's the uh, there's the other African hiding right there. The yellow labs I've really taken to these uh, to these rocks, which is why I feel like I need a much larger population in here. Everybody will be moving around more. But uh, for the short term, I'm just going to leave them in here. And now this guy comes out for his picture. Wants his picture taken, but he still wants to be shy. So in the long run, the uh, Africans are all going to end up in here. But for now, this is where we got them. And then right below the uh, African tank here, I've got another 125. And in this tank, I've got my uh, black Venezuelan quarry cats, which, as I said before, I absolutely love. These things are absolutely awesome. And they're doing fantastic in here, and they're growing really fast. But, of course, I've also got 11 angelfish, uh, some, seven, seven of which I bought, and four of which were gifted to me because they outgrew the tanks they were in. And uh, my plan for these guys, you can see I've got some pieces of slate in there, and I've already gotten some babies off of them, but it turns out it's harder than I thought to raise baby angelfish, so I'm still working on that process. I've got a, a little tank out there I'll show you in a minute with some babies in it right now, and you can see the males are already fighting. They like to hang out in this corner for some reason. and uh, But they do give me eggs from time to time, so uh, I'm working on that, and I plan on splitting these guys up in the, uh, the pairs that they've made with each other. And uh, so far I've been pretty lucky too because the, uh, the regular angelfish, the wild caught type, even though they may have been aquarium bred, have paired up and all the other pairs are the uh, koi angelfish have all paired together. So I got about three pair in there right now and then uh, I'll separate them out and I'll see how many I end up with after that. Okay, it's a little bit messy but this is my, my wall of tanks. Got uh, six tanks here and uh, in the bottom one right here I've got uh, one of my attempts at raising baby Corys. I've got uh, only three survivors, which was disappointing, but uh, they're coming along nicely, and I'm working on that process as we speak. I'm making a video where I'm going to show how to be successful with the baby Corys, because so far I don't consider three a success. Right above them, we've got the, the volunteer zebrafish, the ones I didn't even know were in there. They raise themselves until I found them. Now, of course, I feed them. And uh, they've grown up. And in fact, a couple of females are already carrying eggs, like that one right there. So uh, if I wanted to, I could breed these guys. And in fact, the java moss that I put in there, that's how they accidentally ended up in there, little bits of it remain. And it's actually growing into pretty nice little, little branches there. So they'll probably be breeding on their own pretty soon if I leave them in this tank. But them... I've got a pretty plain tank, it's got a little gravel in it, and it's also got a single goldfish who's hiding right now. The goldfish is a baby from, uh, from this year, it's one of those accidental babies that I didn't even know existed, and I just happened to accidentally see her in the filter of the goldfish pond, and I'm using her just to, uh, to get this tank ready for other fish. And on this side, I've got another tank, same situation, another... Uh, sibling of that last uh, little angel uh, little uh, goldfish and uh, also cycling this tank out with the uh, with fish getting them ready as a grow out tank for some of my babies 
Then we got my 20 gallon tank. And in here I've got my adult zebra fish. And they're doing great. In fact, I'm thinking about uh, trying to do another batch of zebras because the, you can see those females are very fat and very ready to lay eggs. I've only got one male in there, so might be a good time. And I also got my gold laser quarries in here. And these guys are doing great. Very shy. They're also very pretty. Mostly they just hang out underneath this uh, plastic plant. So at some point I'm going to get them into a better tank, a better situation, and get some live plants in there with them and, and try to breed them when they get a little bit older. And then below them I got my guppy tank. I think everybody has to have a guppy tank. This one has got probably 50 guppies in there. And uh, sadly I use them to, uh, to test out other tanks. They're kind of my canaries. But uh, they do a good job and I keep them around and I think they're very pleasant looking. Okay, and right around the corner we got the African tank, which is really just supposed to be a grow out tank, but uh, these guys have been in here now for over a year. There's one eye jack, lost an eye probably to one of the ornaments in the tank here. There are two males in there, but one hasn't colored up because Jack's the, uh, the dominant male. I got a reflection of the uh, fish pond there. But I do believe this girl right here is carrying again. So I'll hopefully get some more babies out of her. And right below this tank here, we've got another grow up tank that also hasn't been changed much in a long time. I've got some ordinary bronze quarries in here and I'm trying to uh, trying to breed them but not having much success. Also got a couple of white skirt tetras. They're uh, towards the end of their life. They're both uh, several years old, probably four years old. So uh, they can't live forever. <laughs> but we're going to make them as happy as long as we can. And the quarries. Okay, and then just over here to the left. Light's not very good on these guys, but these are the uh, zebra daniels that I've bred and raised myself. And these guys are getting up there in size. They're past all the danger points. They're now basically just fish, just small fish. They're not uh, not really babies anymore, and they're doing really well. And the, uh, the java moss is also doing quite well in there. So yeah, pretty soon I'm going to have a tank absolutely full of these guys. And when you get to zebra daniels, you need a really tight lid on the top because they do jump and... Uh, I've, lost, I've already lost some like that, and I see them all over the pet stores like that. They have a lot of problems with that. But just to the left, we got the fish pond. Nothing dramatic going on here. Just the fish getting bigger every day. Got my giant down there, about 14 inches. But I was noticing that my uh, Shabonkin is also getting quite nice size on him. Getting to be... Big beauty, big beauty. But they're all getting really nice and big. They're about eight, eight years old for the oldest ones, six years old for the next, and then of course I've had babies, so like these guys are uh, two years old, and the ones I showed you are one year old, or not even a year old, they're only a few months old. They grew really well, ironically, in the filter. So that's crazy, but uh, it worked. And here's one of my 29 gallons. This is going to be a uh, breeding tank for the angelfish. I was just trying to get it cycled, so I had put some guppies in there. But I also have one quarry catfish from a, sadly from a whole batch. That's all that survived in that batch was just this one. But as you can see, he's getting quite big. He's doing really well. So at least with him, I'm happy. But soon, this is going to be an angelfish home. And in fact, this whole wall here, which is blank. It used to be somebody's workout room. This is going to be a uh, home of grow-out tanks. I'm going to have uh, 18 20 gallon long grow-out tanks on this wall. Possibly some breeding tanks as well. And uh, as far as those African babies go, there they are right there. They're in their grow-out tank. Eventually this tank and the others are going to be uh, on that wall I just showed you, but uh, for now I've got them on this uh, stand that I built for a couple of 125 gallon tanks and uh, there's one of the tanks there and the other one needs to be uh, cleaned out and uh, re-glazed because it, it would leak but uh, in the meantime I went ahead and put these 20 gallon longs on there and uh, I'm raising up these babies from the uh, from the Africans I've got 80 of them in here I was able to count them as I moved them over 
these guys are really awesome. They're very personable. They know who feeds them. It is a lot of fun taking care of these. And just to the right, I got another grow out tank. And so far, those babies haven't uh, made it yet, but they haven't died yet. I'm, I'm working on them. These are some baby angel fish. I'm not sure I can even zoom in on them. They're so small. No, nah, I cannot. But those little black specks, those are all baby angel fish. And there's probably about 50 of them in there. So with a little luck, get them going. Just below them, another batch of another batch of Cory catfish. Unfortunately, this one's not very huge either. These guys are even smaller. And they're all hiding from me now. They're usually always out. Oh, there's one right there, but it's pretty small. Oh, there's two right there, okay. There's only about six or seven in the tank here. Hopefully you can see them, but, uh, oh, there, there we go. There's one. Yeah, there's only about six or seven in there, so I still consider that a fail. You know, if I don't get 50 or more, then I don't think I've done very well. And this tank, this is a weird tank. I don't know what happened here. This is kind of the tank of death. I, uh, I put two fish in all four of these tanks at the same time, and everything was fine, except in this tank, two guppies immediately died. So I waited a few weeks, and I put two more guppies in there, and they lived. And then I had to put two others in there for a while to hold them, and they lived. And then I put a batch of baby quarry cats in there and they all immediately died. So I'm gonna be working with this tank for a while. I put some plants in there, I'm gonna do some water changes and we'll see if I can make this thing habitable. And then over here in the opposite corner, yeah, here's a couple of tanks I'm gonna have in the, uh, in the grow up area. This is uh, my nephew's tank. This is what kind of started with the quarries for me. So he bought three quarry catfish and he bred them into what's now about 16 and uh, all he did was leave them in the tank and then the babies survived and so on until they got up to about 16 and now I removed the babies, removed the eggs and raised them up elsewhere. He, uh, he moved on to college so I've got his tank. We've got a black skirt tetra in there, a couple of hatchet fish and the quarries. In fact, these quarries, some of these quarries are over five years old. There's an albino in there and uh, He's five years old or plus, and there's a couple of those big old females that are over five years old. Yeah, there's one right there. And a set of their babies is in this tank. Not the, uh, not the silver dollar fish there, but uh, the uh, quarries. And I've got eight in here. I had uh, as many as 72. I traded 50 of them to a fish store for an Oscar that I'll show you here in a second. And the rest, they, they give me eggs on a regular basis. This is my pr production tank. In fact, Hanging off the end right here, with some methylene blue in there, is my latest batch of baby Cory eggs. Got about 50 of them in there, so we'll see how that goes. And then for the difficult part. <clears throat> got four beautiful Oscars right now. And uh, for the first time ever, I haven't been able to keep my Oscars together, except for these two, because they fight something fierce. If you look at his lip, he's got the results of some nasty fights. I mean, I've seen him fight before, but never like this. He had a nasty fight with Pumpkin, my biggest Oscar, who I'll show you here in a second. And he tore his lip up. Hopefully he turns for me. I get a better shot of him. But he kind of knows I'm talking about him, so he's turning the wrong way. And I've had to put up this divider to separate out Pumpkin, who also got tore up in this fight. Uh, she's still looking beautiful. And they're all three eaten, so I'm happy about that. But Pumpkin, uh, Pumpkin had some of her, her uh, nose actually ripped up in this fight. It was terrible. But uh, it does seem to be growing back, although they just broke through the barrier today when they were together for a few minutes. I don't think they fought, but I don't know for sure they didn't. And, but as soon as they got back on the opposite sides, I closed the barrier again. And there they go again. They're still, still fighting, even though, even though his mouth is half tore up. But these two at least fight like I'm used to, you know, just a little pushing around nice and gentle. And actually, the one with his tore up mouth is usually the dominant one. He's the one who kept picking a fight with Pumpkin. But this one, who was not dominant, has decided to become dominant now that everybody's hurt. And yeah, there's a view of Pumpkin's nose there. She got tore up pretty bad, but uh, it's, it's coming back nicely now, so should be all right. And she's still eating, that's the main thing. It's still eating, no real infection, visible or anything, just up skin but whenever I separated everybody 
I even took out the non-dominant one because she was getting bullied. I put her in with my smallest, which was a big mistake. Let's take a look. Uh, there's my pretty little girl. She is so cute, so pretty. And she has really got tore up. I mean, I've never, I've been keeping Oscars for 30 years. I've never seen anything like this. That is healing. That is closing, I'm happy to say. It was worse. There was a big flap of skin that fell off. But my gosh, what in the world is going on there? I, I just, I had, uh, I did have a viewer uh, or a subscriber say maybe it's just that the redheads are hot-headed. So, you know, I've never had this many albino red Oscars before. So maybe that's it. But uh, yeah, she even had a little one on this side. Let's see, is that still there? Yeah, it's still there. She's healing and she does eat too, though. So I'm happy about that. But I'll be a lot happier whenever all that heals up. And what the hey, let's finish up on a positive note. This is yet one more attempt to, uh, to breed my quarry catfish. And this attempt resulted in six successful babies. Again, that's still a big failure because the first two times I tried without trying, I ended up with uh, 72 and something near 70. So six is definitely, in my opinion, a failure. But at least I got six and they're very cute and they're really doing well. And I accidentally left one guppy in here. Uh, now she's hiding, here she goes. But uh, one guppy is totally harmless. And on top of that, it's nice for the, uh, the quarries to have a fish swimming overhead, especially a small fish, because that just tells them there's no predators above. So that lowers their anxiety level. Okay, that's gonna do it for the OTC Fish Keeper today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button. And until next time, keep having fun, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the quick tour of the fish room. And see you later.